Welcome to Rugby and once again back on Free Sports and a special show tonight because Jonesy is your first show as a civilian. <laughs> and we've got a we've got a red hot guest tonight. The man who's been clean sweep at the presentation nights Cast Tigers. Called up to the Great Britain squad and a nominee for Man of Steel, Liam Watts. Welcome to Rubem, mate. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Jonesy, firstly, you, you're not a player anymore. How does it feel? Does it feel weird waking up and not having to go training? We're talking about where people have been asking me for the last two years if I've retired. And finally, I can say yes. Uh, no, it do not feel weird because we've just had our last game, you know, obviously, uh, a week last Friday. And we have usually have a pre season anyway, get together, have a little bit of fun. And at the minute, it feels like pre season. But I imagine by the time it comes to sort of middle of November, lads are back into it, training hard, and pre-season starts, I'll be missing it, mate, because I'll be a bit of a lost sheep, and I'll be starting my new role. I remember watching Gaz Ellis at Hull, and I think you were playing then. I went to, over to do some filming in Rugby, and he was looking out the window, all the boys training, and he, he almost had a tear in his eyes. I said, Gaz, what? what's up with this? He said, I, just, I think I've retired too early. I went, <laughs> mate, get yourself back out there. <laughs> Oh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. It was just all in his mind at the time, wasn't it? And he's come back now, he's going again. Yeah. He's the longest survivor. I think he, um, like I said, he had about six months off. Yeah. And he said it's best his body's ever felt. And then he just got that bug again for it. And obviously, we've been around training and stuff and watching. And, you know what I mean? I, I, it must be hard to stand there and watch lads that you've trained with all your life and it's it's all you've ever known. Yeah. And for him to be stood there watching out at the window, I can remember it, actually, to be fair. And then we went to Walls as well, he missed out on that. And, like I said, he just he just come back and he said it's best his body's ever felt and he's, he wants to go round again, does the uh, the old dog. I used to pat down with him in, uh, in back row, obviously, for a couple of years. He was outstanding, one of the best I ever played with. Uh, but I can understand that because after a, a fair layoff like I've had this year, played that Salford game, the second before last, the penultimate game of the season. I remember thinking, mate, I've missed this. <laughs> really enjoyed it, scored a try, it went balmy. And then it was from Monday, Tuesday, that week, I was so fragile. You know, when everything yeah. starts to work, the joints, the ribs, yeah. didn't want to have any contact at all at training, just wincing at everything. And I thought, no, that's me. One last effort against uh, Warrington. And I don't think I'll miss it in, that, in the same way as Gaz did. I think now that I've got so many things going on, yeah. I'm looking forward to powering on into the future. How, how was it, your, your final game, John? Oh, it was, it was unreal. It, the club did it well. The they club did, did it really, really well. well. And uh, big thanks to them, big thanks to the supporters, big thanks to everybody in Rugby League, actually. I've had some really nice uh, well wishes throughout the game. And big thanks to yourself, Simo, for putting some nice little special moments oh. on the Utah Saints. And uh, my kids obviously walked out of me, which is wonderful, my family. My sister sang. And I got the all famous Leeds Rhino shirt from 1996. Yeah, I could not believe it. The who, who, who sorted that? That's um, Phil Daly. It was his yeah, idea. He awesome. knew that I always wanted one. There's a rare Leeds shirt in 96. They wore it once. There was only ever 20 made. Uh, and it was red and black. So the Leeds fans went absolutely barmy. What's going on here? So they scrapped it after one game. And there's a few rare photographs of Ellery yeah. and uh, Andy Gregory, Bobby Goldie. And I always wanted one. And uh, they've made me some replicas. And I put it up Carly in black label. And, and, they, yeah. and they've got the boy's name in the middle of the shirt as well. Yeah. And it's quality. Yeah, wonderful. What's it? Talk to us about Cass. Because no Gailey all year. Truman's come to the fore being unbelievable in the GB squad. And you win away at Warrington to go again next week. Yeah, it were, um, it were a bit of a big week. Obviously getting beat by Wigan. We uh, won at his best. And it tells you it's... Um, I think everybody's just not giving us a chance. Uh, players that we've had missing all year has been un unbelievable really to say that we've still made the five and we're waiting to see what the score was with um, with Saints and Saints and all but like I said we, we, we had every chance, um, gave us ten a chance and like I said we, we knew going into Warrington that they've won the Challenge Cup do you know what I mean and I've been there yeah. and you, you do drop off yeah. and I think even um, leading up into that the, the five games into that Challenge Cup they didn't, they didn't win one game. Uh, so we we know that we had a chance. We we stuck in there and it was a tough game, but we we know that we had it in tank. How much determination have you got? Because when you look at Cass and you mentioned injuries there, there's always been a, a lot of fluidity around the Cass attack in particular, especially 2017 and 18. Really good. Obviously, Luke Gale's not played much because of his injuries, and you've got Jake Truman come through, and he's starting to get that flow now. But you've had to do it tough in terms of just gritting your teeth and battle through it. Can that get you all the way to the end? Like I, I said, but remember 2014? I think Saints went through a period of just injuries and just battled the way to grand final. Yeah. Won it. Can, Flash, can, can, Flash yeah. played in half. Yeah, that's right. Flash yeah. and JT. Can, yeah. can Cast do the same this year? 
I can't say why not. Like I said, with with, with some of the injuries that we've had to the players, and like I said, I, I think there's there's only me that's played most of the games. You know what I mean? I've missed two, um, but it just shows that the, the team that we've had all year that's been scratched together at times or times where we just we had no players. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> was, I think at one time we had about 15 training. Do you know what I mean? And you can't. We were that deep into uh, reserves that we we just had to keep podding on. And like I said, it's. We slowly started getting a few back, and we we, uh, we sat down with a with a ten game plan that Pauli put together for us, and leading into playoffs, and we were still within touch of it. And like I said, we we knew what we needed to do, and we, we put this plan together, and we just man, managed to scrape in there. And like I said, it, it showed some character that we've had with, between the lads, and you've sometimes you've just got to grit and bear it. And these times where you are down to reserves, and you just got to keep on plodding. There's been some players he's bought in this year as well, like Chris Clarkson, who's really stuff and played some big minutes and turned into a bit of a key man when everyone thought oh, he'd be a squad player. Yeah, and the Smiggy as well, he come in, uh, Jordan Rankin. They've all they've all had to add something to our team and credit where credit's due, you know what I mean? They've done a good job and they've come in and Clark he didn't have a club at all. Uh, the club gave him a chance and he's he's repaid that and we're trying to get him one more year, we keep chanting <laughs> after the games. <laughs> one more year and uh like I said, so hopefully we'll we'll keep him on board for next year. But it's been it's been a tough year um, on and off the field. And like I said, we've been trying to get a, a, a big circle of stuff going behind the scenes, leadership and all that sort of stuff. And like I said, it's it dropped it's dropped onto my toes half at time with you know what I mean. And I'm wanting to play and and lead that pack. Tell me a little bit about you, Liam, because you've been phenomenal, a talisman this year. And I don't think it's just uh, a fluke either. There's been a real consistency. It's not just a period of time where you're having a few good months all the way through. It, why is it? Is it is it the right time of your career? Are you at the right age? Are you at the right club? What's what's bringing about these great performances? Give, give her a shout out. Give her a shout. Out. <laughs> they, they always <laughs> said that props don't come into the into the prime until the late twenties. Um, but I think I've been I was playing well a, a few years back. I, I just think sometimes I never got the credit what what I would do sometimes and. Obviously, picking up two Challenge Cups and got a chance, do you know what I mean, to come back home. And and no matter what you say, obviously, you'll feel that as well. You, you're playing f for your mates, more or less, do you know what I mean? The people that you've grown up with. And avid cast fans, and most of my family, my nana goes down to the shop and she's <laughs> getting bombarded and she'll ring me and I say, What's up with so and so? What's up with this? And do you know what I mean? She lives for that, and I, I love yeah. that she can go down to the shop. God help her when I have a bad game because she's getting rinsed at shot. You know what I mean? She'll not go out of the house for a week. But like I said, I'm I'm playing for my brother, my dad. You know what I mean? And and it's a close knit town. And no matter where you go, there's people pulling me up in the street now that I've never even seen in my life. And you know what I mean? Just pulling me. Well, you're doing well. And I think it's just gone a, a different level this year. And I just keep putting myself out there and 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 keep playing well. Mate, you are the biggest celebrity in Castle. You've yeah, taken over Gailey. <laughs> Gailey's gone. It's all about what's here. You've got your, your own meat pack. Yeah. The butchers, but you're named in the dream team. Player of the year. Players player of the year. And obviously, you're in the Castleford Immortals Award as well. That's that's a massive award. All, the, all those in one year. How much do you reckon it's to do with, obviously, coming home and... Not having to make that travel, just a little tiny one percent. I know the boys are what happy now, aren't they? Yeah, well, that was the thing, like with the kids with school and yeah. being able to drop them off and, and pick them up. Little things that you might take for granted, you know what I mean? These blokes that work, you know what I mean, nine, ten hours a day, that'll never be able to do that in their entire life. And yeah. it does make a big difference. And, you know what I mean? I take kids training, and, you know what I mean? The dad's a cast player, and they, ju they just love it, they thrive off it. And, like I said, to you, it's a big thing with family. And, and, and when you're happy off the field, it makes a big difference on the field. And uh, I reckon that's that's been the key to success this year for me. And you're officially blessed now as well, mate. You're engaged. Yeah. Is it official? Yeah, it's official, yeah. You're going to be a Westerman? <laughs> you're going to take, take his name? She's going to be <laughs> Westerman was Watts. Uh, Watts was Westerman. But yeah, it's, um, like I said, it, everything happens yeah. for a reason. And like I said, just even with the move to Castleford at the time, yeah. I, I were on the verge of signing Toronto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and, you know what I mean? And I, Tell us the story. Tell us the story. Um, like I said, I, I, I got sent off of the head, but um, Radders went a bit ballistic, calling me soft and that. Did he? So uh, <laughs> me and Radders had a bust up. <laughs> but, uh, but me and Radders were like that. We had that yeah. um, sort of camaraderie you with each other. You did a lot of you when you created it. Yeah, I did. Say, like I said, he's a good bloke. He's a top bloke, and I'll always respect him. And... Like I said, just some things happen, and we, we always were at loggerheads with each other, and it, half of the time it was just oh and oh, yeah. and, um, and and things just transpired really quick, and 
I got a phone call from my agent, Toronto, who'd been trying to get me, get me, get me. And yeah. Obviously, Westy were there, so Westy yeah. would have kept feeding the pipeline. Yeah, yeah, we'll get him, we'll get him. And then um, it just it just happened so quick. I did that with the, with the head button. It just blew up. It was just crazy. And then, like I said, within 24 hours, I had a phone call saying, oh, the, you've got permission to, uh, for Toronto to speak to you. And anyway, I had a meeting with Toronto. And look, have it, Jamie Ellis. Um, we're at the Village Hotel yeah. in Leeds. Anyway, I walks in and Jamie's there. He says, what are you doing here? I'm like, uh, uh, and I'm just having a meeting with Toronto. <laughs> anyway, he's gone back to training then the day after, obviously. Said that um, I was on, a, on with the move to Toronto. Nobby ringing me. Um, I'm, coming to, I'm coming with your contract now. I said, just odd off a minute here. I says, uh, I might have something else. Obviously, because Castle yeah. in two plague, you yeah, see. Yeah, and yeah. it meant yeah, me, yeah. you know what I mean? I, I was dropping down. There were a lot of travelling and stuff. And I was going to be away for eight weeks, away from the kids. And I just thought, can't do it anyway yeah. and then f when Cass come in and offered me I was just like boom get it done <laughs> <laughs> so Nobby wasn't happy he turned his phone off I think I'm blocked now but he, he's like I said he, he wished me well and like I said it's, it's just it's got to be it all fell right yeah everything every little step happened for a reason you are a massive part of the community as well obviously the kids playing as well is that do you think you'll end your career at Cass yeah, definitely yeah, I don't want to end it anywhere else like I said I, I, I never wanted to leave in the first first place um, when I when I was originally there at, at 15, 16, but I just knew it was always going to be hard. And these kids that come through now that that, that have to go elsewhere because you, you it's, you've got to make your name and, and yeah. make your mark. And I'm glad I've done it the way that I have done because I, I've gone via two challenge cup wins. You know yeah. what I mean? A, a lot of playoffs and it, it, it it's made me a more full-bodied player and coming back with a lot of knowledge and 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 hopefully now with the, with the role that Paul is <coughs> given to me with the leadership stuff really helping me with my off field and, and, and giving a little bit back and just being in that community now I'm I'm quite a big figure so like I said I'm, I'm just trying to do a, a, as much as I can and it's opened my eyes yeah. to what actually what else is above and beyond rugby. I think that's the most important thing yeah. I, I'll go right back to it I've been saying it for a while it's more than 50 percent so you, you think about stats and statistics and performances game plans on the pitch I think more than 50% of it is just being a happy person inside yeah. or off the yeah. field. When you're ingrained in a community, you understand your identity, who you're playing for on a weekly basis. Yeah. That is 100% key, and that's what gets people up for it. I remember, actually, if you, if you remember, you talk about the headbutt there. Oh, we, we'd gone down to Lock Lane to film the NCL yeah. <laughs> videos, and it was just yeah. on that, because we incorporated the yeah, headbutt yeah, into the, yeah. the video, and you can see how you've changed from when yeah. you were there to how you are now as a, as a person of personality. Like, people... Uh, Every, we're just normal, we're not robots, we're just human yeah. beings, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And everybody else has the problems and stuff and and people don't know you from day to day and don't see what's going off in your life and we're like anybody else. So when, when stuff is going off in your life, it might not be much, but it does, it does have an effect yes. at somewhere yeah, or some 100%. point in your life and it's how you deal with it. And like I said, and, and, and everything's just transpired and it's, it's all happened and it's, it's got me to where I am today. And I, 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 like I said, I would never change it because it, it's got me to where I am now. You seem a lot more relaxed now, like a lot more centred, a bit more zen. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> but looking towards the end of the year, because obviously you want to go to grand final, you want to win that trophy, yeah. but also the Great Britain. So now there's been, a, obviously, the NRL players seem to get picked a lot more than the Super League players, yeah. especially in the forwards. Are you confident of getting on that tour? Can't say why not. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've been one of consistent front rowers this year. There, there's a lot of good lads out there, English players. Um, but we, we have got a good pool of players here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, and to say that they're playing in NRL, is, what 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 difference does it give them to them to not be picked? Do you know yeah. what I mean? With us, so it's just see how it goes. And I'm not going to have me sent back. I, I don't want to play. I don't want to go. And I'd, I'd be lying if I said that. I'd, that I, I didn't want to go. I, it's one thing that you want to do, and it's a GB thing yeah. that's, that probably might never happen is again. That a and, pinnacle. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the few of the meetings that we've had is might never happen ever again. This. Yeah. So to be probably be picked on one of the last ever tours of GB, it's, it'll be up there one of the best things that's ever happened. I can't see for any reason in my mind why they wouldn't. And uh, one of the best ways to sort of solidify your claim for me is to play well in the playoffs. Obviously, yeah, you've yeah. got Salford next. It's a it's a massive game. What the cast need to do to beat Salford because they've been Tough good all year. Teams all I watched the game and th yeah. they really got stuck into each yeah. other. They didn't. Uh, they've. they've They've just crept all year, aren't they? Yeah. They've, they've just got yeah. better and better of Salford, and and all they've got a lot of lads leaving. So 
you know you send when there's lads leaving you just keep playing for them in yeah. the end and you get into a groove where you're just playing well but we've got a tough game on our hands on Thursday and they might be looking at us thinking yeah we, we've got this and yeah. I, I, I listened to a few of the interviews after the game and it just sounds like they've just totally disregarded this game on Thursday and like I said it, it, it all comes down to Thursday and that, that that's the first game that's in front of us leading to anywhere before you even get even think about a grand final is you've got it's a knockout knockout game there's no yeah. second chance this week they've had a second chance it, there's none this week I love it I love it he's up for yeah, it, he's up for it. He's he's right, gonna get stuck in. In. right let's go over to one of your former clubs now Hull KR as they give us the K2 teammates with Rob Mulhern and Mitch Garbert <laughs> G'day, Mitch Garbett. Mitch. <laughs> I am Robin Malone, I don't have a nickname. Easily, our new addition, Matt Parcell. I don't think the boys have really realised yet, but he's as tight as they come. Refuses to drive, and then when he doesn't drive, he doesn't get coffees in either, so not good on him. Mikey Lewis loves a good oh. boys dug deep tweet. Yeah. Killing it at Newcastle the minute is Mikey. Yeah, he's yeah. retweets his man of the matches. Yeah, retweets the man of the match. That's a good one yeah. for him. He's only young though, isn't he? He's got time. He's got time. He's the most active though, isn't he? Yeah, yeah definitely. Abs, hundred yeah, percent. Probably would probably would be me, but Mags is obviously the, the oldest person in the world, but um, in the squad it'll yeah, probably be me. Body of a sixty year old. Yeah. He used to be showy, but not anymore. He'd, well, he'd, he'd, he'd fall, but he'd always be back there at the end of the night. But um, <laughs> there's a few um, George Lawler sometimes. Yeah. Had many, like, not you. No, I'm not first you. in bed. I'm in bed before 12. Uh, Mossy? Mossy oh, hangs Mossy in there. Mossy can drink. Yeah. Mossy can put him away. Yeah. Yeah, Mossy, probably yeah. Mossy, yeah. yeah. Weller. <laughs> Weller. Yeah. Furious all the time. Weller just threatens to punch everyone's teeth in every day, so. Yeah, I think Weller forgets you're allowed to tackle people and when he's got the ball, <laughs> he's just not happy. Craig Hall, close. Oh, no, when you're on the field, you, you do a bit, but it's never there. But yeah, <laughs> I've never seen Ollie break a sweat. Never, doesn't need to though, does like he? This, he's he's just, a natural. He's a natural footballer. Uh, he doesn't need to break a sweat. That's a fair point. Definitely not me. <laughs> not me. But, um, um, Mags maybe, got a yeah, bit of history, aren't they? Yeah. Those Mags, um, loves all these little Aussies though, doesn't they? Likes Drink, drinky. Yeah, likes drinky. Uh, a bit. So, showy in a weird way. Yeah, because I think they're like, related, aren't they? So. Yeah, I think that Showy might be Tony's son in some sort of way, but <laughs> it's not proved yet. Me. Yeah, I've got, I've got the same set of clothes that I wear. I've got four different sets, I just rotate them, depending on how I feel. Slightly different shades of beige. <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, I can shift a bit. Yeah, Mo oh, Mossy, no, Mossy, no, Mossy is, yeah. I've never seen Mossy oh not lift God. anything. So, he like if it's 60 kilos in the bar, he lifts it. If it's 300, he lifts it as well. So he thought he had a bad shoulder once, so he picked up a 50 kg dumbbell and just started <laughs> doing that to test if it was all right. And I was watching him like, what's going on? Yeah, so he's uh, he's just he's a freak. Uh, Come on. Well, do you know what? This is a bit left field. Showy's actually really smart. He's very, you can, he's yeah. very weird, but you can sit down and have a conversation with him. Robbie's quite clued up on yeah. a lot of things. Joel's got a bit about him. I, one, one of, uh, I've got it. Jimmy Kynos is a smart Oh, yeah, go, Jimmy. I think he can read, so he beats 90% yeah. of us. Chris Atkin. Yeah, Chris Atkin. Yeah, Chris Atkin. Always, Mrs. Always been told what to do. I think a few of the boys, I don't think anyone's really... I'm scared of my missus. Yeah, you are, you are quite under the thumb. Yeah, but not under the thumb, I'm just scared of yeah. a different but thing. It? Roof is lovely, but terrifying <laughs> in equal measure. <laughs> Shall we? Shall we, yeah. Because it, it'll take about 30 seconds before he come up with a weird idea, which he thinks is, is fine. <laughs> I won't go too into it, but it just throws something out there that I shouldn't, shouldn't say. Elliot, Elliot Wallace. Wallace. <laughs> Elliot Wallace, he's allergic to <laughs> water and deodorant. I think it must burn him or something. I've never seen him clean. He reeks. Yeah, oh, he's he got. Reeks. He, he's a lovely kid, though, isn't he? Yeah, he's well, just, he does. He's off. got a scent oh, about him, yeah. We are. We can get quite loud as, as a but, collective. Yeah. We're not. We're not individually loud, though, are we? Strong uh, as a pack. 
Uh, Ollie. Ollie yeah, Ollie's like funny, yeah. Ollie's pointing things out. Very yeah. funny block. Give Ollie that one. Uh, probably no, Ruxy. Ruxy. Yeah, again, the young lads are always preening themselves. Just in general. Like, Doing their hair before training. Yeah, yeah probably Ruxy, yeah. yeah. That, they just get their hair real high. I don't know how they do it. They get their hair about this high. Just pretty good. Well, he doesn't go his way in training. I know he's bad, he's had a few. Well, but yeah, but Wella, Wella wants to kill you. He doesn't, yeah. He's not a sulky, he wants to kill you. Uh, Elliot can get a bit yeah. sucky. Uh, Drinky, likes a soak. Oh, drink. If the weather is anything but this, he's soaking. Yeah, he hates the cold. Great chat there, Jonesy, with the uh, former teammates. Two former teammates. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talking about. Good on them. Okay, I had some good times up there. Tell us about some of your Justin Morgan memories. Yeah, uh, Peter Fox, one of the best ones. Like I said, I, it, we kicked off against St. Helens. They've been showing preview clips of Fox all week, knacking up in training and, and, and in games. <laughs> they kicked off, and the ball's landed in front of Foxy, and the ball's bounced up, and he's looking round for it. For it, gone in touch, it just bounced off his head, and, <laughs> and all the all the like Saints boys are running up, just laughing their head off. And then he did another. He's, um, I can't remember who. I, Got tackled, um, I think it might have been Jake Webster got tackled near the touchline and Foxy's put his foot in touch, not realised, looked up and passed the ball in field. <laughs> <laughs> the touch was just put his, put his flag on because Foxy's had his foot in touch. Wow. Oh, you've played for some great coaches, but who's the best coach you've played for, in your opinion? Um, I, like, I like Justin Morgan. Yeah. Um, he just had a character about him where he, he just knew what he wanted and like, he, he gave me my opportunities as, as a young kid and I'll, I'll be forever grateful and in debt to him for that and he, he, he would he would just the stature of the bloke or a big bloke and he just always said you, you just listen to him and, and he got out of players what he wanted and like I said I, I spoke about Radders and Radders is a different to type of coach he's your best mate as, as well as a coach and he gets involved with lads and then again I, I go on to Pauli and is is enough? Is another different coach. Uh, he's really calm. Um, he can have a go though if he wants to go. Yeah. I've, I've heard him often in a few players yeah, out this year when he he walked across pitch, <laughs> yeah. spraying what it was. Greg Eden. Eden. <laughs> <laughs> we were just like, oh, he's going to get him at half time when we go in there. there. What happened? I can't remember what Greg did now. Did he throw it? He threw an outrageous ball or something like that. And For an intercept. Yeah, yeah and and Paul has come down just before half time. But normally they have to wait until. <laughs> anyway, he's just come walking across. He says, then he realised that he was walking that slow and he was fuming and cameras on him. <laughs> Everybody's like, what's he doing here? We can't kick off until he gets off the pitch. And then he had to get like a little trot on, did foul in. He was absolutely fuming. I think he got a fine for that, in fact. Wow. Right now it's time to win grand final tickets. You might not need them because you could be there playing. Do you, are you confident? Are you confident of getting there this year? Well, I, it's. How's the feeling with the boys in the, in the squad? We've, we've snuck in there in the five. Uh, yeah. Not warrant enough, so I can't see why not. We, we, we've got a belief within ourselves. This week's a big, massive game for us. Uh, we touched on it earlier, and we, we've got a tough game on our hands. And I, I think they've got a tough game on our hands with us. If, if we're clicking and, and everything's going right, and as defence last week were absolutely immense, and with their game, what they had, they had another tough encounter against Wigan. So it's it's going to be a massive um, defensive battle. I, I mean, I've been fortunate to do it twice from fifth. Definitely possible. It's a bit cliche, but we took one game at a time. Yeah. And I've mentioned it a few times, <laughs> but the Packers of Green Bay did it the year before, and they talked about 16 quarters, and we just broke it down to eight hours and went through each game, so in his eight hours and then the six hours and his four hours, right through the grand final. But I had to ask you, obviously, being from around Cass, myself and Danny Maggs, whenever we made the grand finals, particularly finishing from fifth, everybody gets really excited. And we both had to get like 30 odd, 40 tickets yeah. for family and friends. Yeah, How many would you have for like, <laughs> if you got to go for the machine? Hey, I've done it for the Challenge Cup twice. Yeah. And oh, it cost me an absolute fortune, arm and a leg. Yeah, it <laughs> because comes it wage, comes out of our wage, obviously. Yeah. We're getting the old 30 quid here, there, everywhere yeah. for the tickets and stuff. And then when you get the bonus and, and it's minus 900 quid, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I've come away with 1100 quid now and in the Challenge Cup final. <laughs> Where's the incentive here? Yeah. But, like, oh, I've got, I won't like to say how many I'd, I'd be getting. I'd be yeah. getting a few. I'd be yeah. definitely dead set getting a few. Mate, it's, it's outstanding. If you want to be at Grand Final this year, is now is your chance to win courtesy of Bachelor's Mushy Peas. 
It couldn't be simpler. Just go to rugbym.co.uk, enter your details, and you could be lucky enough to be watching this man, hopefully, in the grand final at Old Trafford this year. That's it for part one right here on Free Sports. Stay tuned for more after the break. Well, Liam Watts, Jamie Jones, Buchanan, and myself, Alex Simmons, we'll see you after the break. Welcome back to Rugby I'm here on Free Sports. Back in part two, Jamie Jones, Buchanan, and Liam Watts, our guests tonight. Watts, we've got to ask you, mate, there's so many stories, some we can tell on TV, some we can't, but can you give us a bit of the Western wedding cake? Yeah, obviously I had Wester's best man <laughs> wedding. And <laughs> I was sat on the table and the speeches were going on and then it was my turn next. Just as I'm getting up, Craig Ubi says to me, I'll, uh, I'll give you 40 quid if you put your head through cake <laughs> <laughs> on, your, on your way off. So I'm like, you know, I, I, I love a bet and you know what I mean? I, I love a dare. <laughs> so I gets up there and does me a bit of a speech and that. And I've got the, the champagne glass. Anyway, this is a, a toast to Lauren and Joe and swilled myself with the champagne. So I'm dripping. <laughs> the cake's just there. I don't know how it ended up there. It was just there and just woof. Put, Fully smashed your head straight Put my head a bit. I forgot that the, the actual cake were added on by prongs. <laughs> yeah. So it was like a free tea cake and it had spikes <coughs> to stop it from moving or falling over. So as I've put my head straight through the cake, the spikes have come straight up and gone straight through my forehead at the front. Wow. So I've just got blood dripping <laughs> dripping all over me. It's all blood in the cake. What, what, what did the family think? Well, I, it didn't go down so well. Um, Wes's dad tried killing me. Um, <laughs> he gave me, a, gave me a crack that night, so I ended up with a bloody nose. His man took me nearly 12 months to get back speaking to her. <laughs> <laughs> She's the mother-in-law now nearly. So. <laughs> Uh, like I said, it's, yeah. it's all fun and games, isn't it? and you, some of the stuff you do when you've uh, you've had a few too many. But Mate, you know what's going to happen now, don't you? Your wedding. Let's, let's yeah. Yeah, gonna get a West is going to. He's only going to be showing himself up, isn't he? So it doesn't make a difference <laughs> to me, and I'll make sure that the spikes do get bigger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that big cake like that. Yeah. But my, my wife makes cakes, yeah, a lot of them, and when I heard the story, like it tickled me. And every time I thought about it, I was laughing. I'm thinking, you look, it could have been an so epic fail. If you remember, ended up in eyeball, and you stood up with it. Out, well, I wouldn't have been sat here today with you, yeah, Jones. You've been, <laughs> you've, been, you've been lucky. You've been lucky. Yeah, it was dangerous. I got, and I think uh, the icing as well were proper sharp as well. And I'd like all like swirls of flowers stuck in my head. <laughs> got up and had like all icing stuck to my forehead. <laughs> and, we, and there was just a silence and everyone went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's he done? And I just know then that I'd. Um, gone too far. Yeah, I'd gone too far. Yeah, that, that little <laughs> point when you look back and you think, nah, just, there's no way, no way getting back, is there? No. Did you get no 40 back? quid? Did you get 40 quid? <laughs> no, Chubbs went, you really think I'm going to give 40 quid? <laughs> <laughs> I went, come on. Then get a drink, then Chubbs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chubbs. Really, oh, really. dear. Mate, we've got some fans' questions for you. We've got some quick fire um, as well. We're going to start with um, someone you know really well, Joe Westerman. When is it time to shave it off? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, think, <laughs> I don't think I've got long left. <laughs> so, uh, and I'm not going for a gaily as You're well. You're not going for a gaily. Gaily's, gaily's had his done that, but like his tough stayed at the front and it's still going. <laughs> so he's going to need an infill, we're calling him now. <laughs> he needs a bit of an infill. You know, like when women get the eyelashes done yeah. and they like, get them infilled. Macy Brooks asks, what does the support of the fans mean to you? It's massive. Um, like I said, the, when the 700 fans that went down to Warrington and just a massive following. And uh, when you're playing away from home, obviously th that cast ground's unbelievable. Yeah, uh, it, it's the, probably one of the oldest grounds still uh, alive in Super League. And there's no one better than than stood on that back line. I, I've I've been on the other end of it, the receiving yeah. end of it. and It's not nice, but when there's um, when there's seven or eight thousand of them screaming and 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 that jungle, it, it's going. It, it's, it's definitely something else. Um, Paul Mountain says, "What player did you dream about be becoming when you were a kid?" <clears throat> Always looked up to Moz. Yeah. Big character, um, front rower, tough, swinging arm. I had uh, Barry McDermott pad as well, me. The, the big <laughs> yeah, one, yeah. on. <laughs> with, the, with the top one on just to, just to look after the bicep. <laughs> I mean, if you just caught him a little bit too high. <laughs> so we had him, but, but Moz were, were, were up there with me, were my absolute favourite. Loved him. Big form roller, aren't they? Andrew Dixon asks uh, Rugby League's only a short career. Have you got any plans for post career? Just probably thinking about it at the minute. Um, I've not really set my mind on what I want to do. I, I like to go out there and experiment. And um, so I, I'm going to start putting a bit of the feelers out to sponsors and, and, and uh, other people that are involved with the club and try and get with a few um, 
few of the sponsors. There's a couple already come forward to say that there's a nice little steady job there for me. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting a bit of work experience and seeing what I, see what I'm going to enjoy. Uh, time to go over now and see one of your ex-teammates. Tell us how good this man was, Keith Senior Jones. He was the best one. He was one of the best in his day. Centres, world class, world renowned as well. Feared he never took a backward step in front of everybody, and uh, he was massively respected. Love playing on the inside of him. I always got the blame if anything went wrong. But uh, still love it a bit. It's a big founder of Rugby yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, still yeah. still a part of the show as well. Right, it's time to go over now and catch up with the big man as he gives us his age partnership 1 to 13. Watch out for some proper legends in this team. Hi, I'm Keith Senior and this is my greatest 13. Starting at full back, uh, obviously this is a tough challenge to just do one, one to thirteen as your greatest. I've been, you know, very fortunate to play with some some great players. So starting at full back, uh, I'm going to have to go with Brent Webb. Obviously, he's uh, he revolutionised the full back position. I think, in my opinion, the way I had his ball skills and and, and rather than being just a safe, confident full back, he, he was basically another ball player at the back. Uh, and I think with the ball skills and you know, obviously playing against him in the, when the New Zealand side, uh, like I say, I think he, he changed the way our full-backs play and that's a diffi difficulty, you know, Chris Rudrinsky, Paul Wellens, Yestin Harris, you know, some great full-backs, but uh, for my number one, I've gone for Brent Webb. For the wings, uh, this one was reasonably easy. Uh, on one wing, I've gone for the big unit, Ryan Hall. Uh, when I was a young kid, obviously he was a, he was my winger, and I think he's, he's evolved over the years. A tremendous try scorer, he showed that international level. Uh, still scoring tries for fun, and I think the way I was, he's adapted his game now to bring it out of exit. Uh, you know, and for the big guy, he's got some great ball skills. Where he catches the ball, receiving above his head, and then type of thing. So, on one wing, I've got Ryan Hall. On the other wing. Easy as is uh, Jason Robinson. Uh, very fortunate to play international with him, and uh, playing against him, he was just a magician. Uh, the footwork, the skills he's shown in both codes, he was uh, an absolute standout player. Like I say, in both codes, and and the things that he could do was uh, majestic to see. As with Marcus Bay, Francis Cummins, uh, you know, miss out, but uh, you know, they took my two wing spots. For centre, again, uh, there's not that many to choose from. Uh, I think that's why I made such a great career out of it because there's not been not been that many great centres play the game. Uh, on one centre, I've gone for uh, a guy that I looked up to when I first made my international debut, which is Paul Newlove, putting him on the left centre. When I made my international uh, in 1998, playing international side, I was his winger. And, uh, and seeing the guy playing, obviously playing against him, he, uh, he was a superb, superb player, which I say he showed a uh, couple of on international level. Very predictable with what he did, He's, he had a, a left foot step, right hand fend, and the beauty of it was you knew what he was going to do, but it's a, it's a total different scenario to actually stop it. So one centre I've gone for, Gary, uh, for, for Paul Newell, the other centre I've gone for Gary Connolly. Again, similar type of player. He was, uh, you know, everybody say he was the strongest man in the game. His upper body strength, but he was just so consistent. And uh, he, he always used to be in the centre when I used to play against him, in the right centre when I was in the left centre. And it used, you always used to know that you were going to be in for a very, very tough challenge. Uh, you know, to never score an international try is something that I don't think I'll ever be beaten by him. But you know, for for the way we played the game, I total respect for him. And, uh, and like I say, them two were my, my mentors, sort of like growing up as a young kid. Martin Gleeson misses out. You know, I've played against him many times, but he's a, he's a great centre. But you know, I think Gary Connolly just just edges it for me. Standoff. Uh, I've got to put Sinny in there, Kevin Sinfield. Uh, not just down to his, his skill, but his, his game management. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't realise about Kevin Sinfield is the fact that he was, he was meticulous in everything that he did with his skill, his ball skill. If you needed that magic play, a 40-20, or you had a stick drop out, he needed to go for touch because he was, he was very meticulous in his training methods. 
you knew that it was going to come off. Uh, Peter Perfect, we called him, because uh, it was your model professional, I think, because of his game management. Uh, I need to get him in the team somewhere, you know, so I've put him in at standoff. Scrum half, again, it's, uh, it's always going to be a tough one, and you need to stay away a little bit from your Leeds favouritism. You know, close edging, Danny Maguire, Rob Burrow, uh, you know, they're the type of players that are being most people seven, uh, uh, starting 13s, but I've gone a little bit different. I've gone for the grub, Sean Long. Uh, I've gone a little bit tough with my team this way, uh, my team, and uh, I think that's what, what Sean Long has got a little bit above Rob Burrow and Danny Maguire, you know, uh, three very skillful players. And, uh, but I think Sean Long just had that little bit of nastiness in him that, that when you were coming up against the Aussies and the Kiwis, uh, it just sort of like hedged him forward a little bit. And it's always going to be tough to uh, to name a 13. And you know, to, like I said, to leave somebody like Rob Burrow and Danny Maguire out of the team is uh, is scandalous. But uh, you know, to mix it up a little bit, I've gone for gone for Sean Long. For my starting props, again, very, very tough. Very, very tough. Uh, very lucky to play with some great props. Uh, but for one prop, I'm going to go with, uh, with Sam Burgess. Played with him international when I was a young kid. And uh, never forget the hit that he did on Fui Fui Moi Moi from that, from that dropout. And that epitomised what he was. He was a young kid in the, in the Great Britain camp. And, and he bossed it and he's gone to Australia uh, and, he's, and he's shown what a quality player is. You know, so I've got to get Sam Burgess in there at prop. The other prop, uh, my old roommate on the 1996 tour, which is Adrian Morley. Again, got to get him in there and he's, uh, he went over to Australia, played with him at Leeds, went over to Australia, great international career, over 50 caps international. Uh, you know, so I've got to get him in there. And, and one thing he did, he loved uh, bashing the Aussies, so to speak. And uh, when anybody ever says that, you've got to get him in your starting 13. But again, Adrian Morley, real, real tough competitor. And, uh, and one that you'd definitely be in most people starting 13. So then you look at the people that missed out, James Graham, you know, Barry McDermott, Darren Fleary. You know, a lot of people, you know, think of Darren Fleary, they wouldn't have him in your starting 13, but but when you play with the bloke in your team, he's, he, he was a great competitor and he did a lot of the a lot of the tough stuff behind the scenes. So, you know, there's a there's a lot of great props out there. For my hooking position, uh, it's a bloke still playing the game now at the ripe old age. I think he's 33, 34 and, uh, and still killing it. Still killing it, which is James Roby. He was a young kid when he came into the international scene. Uh, understood it to Kieran Cunningham. So, you know, pushing him out, which in, in my opinion, you know, is, 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 is something exceptional in itself. And, and that's a problem. There's so many great hookers out there. But James Roby, like I say now, 34 year old, I think he is. And he's still killing it. He'll still do 40, 50, 60 tackles a game. Still do over 100 metres. Uh, and he's still dominant at his ripe old age. And I think, you know, he epitomises what the hooking role is about. So, you know, so unfortunate James Rose, you know, Lee Jackson, Kieran Cunningham, uh, Danny Badiris, like I say, you know, there's so many great players out there, but I think, you know, just for his all round ability, and like I say, you know, playing with him at a young age, seeing the qualities that he's got, uh, you know, I think James Rose is definitely in there. Second row, uh, I'm chucking in Jamie Peacock in there. Obviously, a lot of play him in the props, but uh, I remember JP when he was a young gangly back rower uh, in his Bradford days and making his Great Britain debut in the back row as well. And, and that was when he was at his greatest and running out wide, causing havoc. And you know, many a times when he was on that Bradford right, running, running towards me and, and causing some danger. And you know, it shows with the career that he's had afterwards making over 500 appearances, international captain. Uh, one of them players, again, that you've just got to get into your team. So uh, one back row I've gone for Jamie Peacock, the other back rower, Gareth Ellis. Remember playing against him years ago when he was in the centre as a, as a young kid, and, and, and thankfully they moved him into the back row, and I think that, it, that helped him uh, tenfolds. And, uh, you know, one player to go to Australia again and get player of the year for three years, you know, on the, on the bounce at West Tigers. And, uh, 
it, 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 all round skill, you know, was tough, uncompromising. He had the pass, he had the offload, you know. So again, Gareth Ellis will be in my back row. Moves forward, uh, probably one of one of my all-time greatest players to play the game, which is uh, Paul Scholthorpe. Totally utmost respect for him. Uh, he had everything. Uh, he was one of them players again. He was tough, uncompromising, but he had a little bit more to his game with the ball skill. You could put him at six, you could put him in the back row, you could put him at 13. Uh, you know, he had a, he had a, a great career and he had an all-round uh, skill set. Uh, not only that, when, when, when things did get tough as well, he'd, he'd do the hard yards coming out of yardage and, and, that's, and that's something that just just puts him up there a little bit in my eyes. It was, you know, when things got tough, he was one of the first people to put his hand up to, uh, you know, to do that. And, you know, so special mention, you know, to Andy Farrell leaving him out. But, you know, I think, you know, Paul Schoolthorpe just sort of like, just, just pushes it for me. I'm Keith Senior, that was my one to 13. Jonesy, what a pack that is. Burgess, oh, that's all right, Robert, that's Morley, Peacock, Ellis and yeah. Skullfall. Yeah, my team, mate. Now, our sponsors of 1 to 13 Age Partnership have come together with us to give out the ultimate, the ultimate grand final experience, right? Five course meal in your box, in a box, posh box. Paul Newlove, Lee Crooks, Gary Schofield. Some opinion there. <laughs> <laughs> Two lucky fans are going to have the chance to win that prize, to go and have dinner with the legends and spend the whole day at the grand final. And the only, the only sticking point is you've got to be over 50. So your dad can enter. What's it? That's a great, great yeah. Call. yeah, your dad can enter. <laughs> so if you're over 50 or you want to treat your mum or your dad um, to go to grand final, and as long as you're over 50, enter the competition on rugbyam.co.uk. It is the ultimate the ultimate grand final package. It's the most expensive grand final package. It's awesome. What's it out of those three players? Which one would your dad most appreciate being with? Um, I'm saying Lee Crooks. Crooks, yeah. Crooks he can't it. stand Schofield. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who's, your dad, who's your dad a big fan of growing up? He must, he must have had a few heroes. Yeah, he, Lee Crooks were one of them. Knock and Orton. Um, yeah. he, he still goes in no. Fryston Club, does uh, Knock and Orton. And, yeah. My dad has a beer with him, and um, th some of the stories you think about our yeah, stories. Yeah. I can remember Knocker once telling me when he, when he moved to Hull, <clears throat> so he, he, he signs at Hull, and then one of the sponsors says to him, Oh, I'll, I'll sort you some fish out, bring your car down. Anyway, so he says he pulls up, he opens the boat, and they just drop him like half a ton of fish in his boat. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, like, he's got, he said he's got this like big alley butt thing in his boat. He says, and what do I do with that? He says, oh, just strap it on and just take it, mate. He said, you all right? <laughs> so it lasted him about two years. He said he was handing it all out to everybody and that. He said, yeah, some of the stories. And like back then, obviously, we're a big drinking culture as well, so they just yeah. used to finish training and the first thing they did was straight to the pub and that. He said and. I think in one year that he were there, he said there were 17 players that got divorced <laughs> because <laughs> Knocker moved there. He said, like, wow. he said it was just it was just crazy. And like I said, I, I just sit down and listen to my dad and, and, and them tell tell the stories. It's it's absolutely unbelievable, some of the stuff. If, today's age, they would be in prison right now. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, yeah, the game has changed without a doubt, but I think there's still a few stories knocking about. And uh, it's that time of year, Mad Monday time of year, and... Mad Monday has changed on it, Jonesy, because I reckon three, even three or four mm. years ago, I went on Wakefields, Bradford's, a bit of Leeds, and it was a bit of madness. It was proper crazy. Yeah. And now, what's happened with the new generation? What's the, the days were well, when you just used to get in your local, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And the, the fans <laughs> used to celebrate with you and, and enjoy a beer with you. And it, it just seems like it's just totally changed now. And I think on, on Old Mad Monday, when I was talking to Esther, there were six of them there. <laughs> I think Daz Clark, they've gone to be, uh, Benidorm. I yeah. think there's six or seven there. There's a few in Dublin. and just seems like it's just getting smaller and smaller. But back in the day, if you didn't go, yeah. you were getting dragged. Yeah. And if, I can remember we once had the party bus and there were seven turned up. And uh, goes into Kirk Eamon Street with the big 50-seater par <laughs> uh, party bus. And we just... Onking the horn outside, <laughs> and Nemo was on the sofa, and we all goes in the house and drags him out, and all the street comes out, and all the kids were on the party bus, and we were all steaming, and the kids are on the bus, papping the horn, and 
It just, do you know what I mean? That and, and that's that's your, that's your release, that's your statement. Obviously, I know there's a lot going off in the NRL where they're on about yeah, cancelling it, cancelling them, and <clears throat> it's it's been a tradition for God knows how long. But like I said, it's we counsel state lads. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And we 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 do love a beer, and you know when you have a few too many, things go too far, and you just gotta you just gotta cop it on the chin, haven't you? <laughs> Times have changed. Up there. You mentioned drinking culture there after yeah. training back yeah, in the day. Yeah. So you just don't do that, do they? They no. have something to eat, they have coffees, and then they go home. And then the phone, I'm not talking about social media in, in terms of getting caught, but it, it's always a distraction, isn't it? Yeah, you're you're yeah. always hearing and seeing what other things are going on. Yeah. And then that, that just separates them and drags them away. Yeah. It has died down, um, which is a bit of a shame. But Mate, on the, well, I DJ'd for you. I'm not going to give any details away what happened on Leeds Mad Monday, but one of the young lads, his mum picks him up at 8 o'clock. Could not believe it. It was a sensible party at my house, that's all. <laughs> Could not. His mum home. picked him up. Where are you off? He went, Mum's here. <laughs> I went, it's Mad Monday. He went, yeah, I know. Yeah. Mum's here now. I've got to go. I'm not going to name names. <laughs> well, PR Jordan Cox did the same, but he was absolutely obliterated. <laughs> so we had a water gun and we were filling up like with vodka and that. <laughs> and he would just stood there and we were just firing it into him <laughs> for two hours solid. <laughs> the next thing he had like a, like a baby's outfit on with a dummy and that. It would just gone on the, gone on the floor. <laughs> we had to ring his mum up and say, you have to come and get your jaw. She just pulled up in the car and she just bust out into tears. She's going, what are you doing to me? And he's just oh, there in a baby costume. And he's just picking him up and his head's down. He's just like spewing him. And like, oh. And that's probably the reason why you're better off going home at eight o'clock. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. Right, some quick fire questions. Uh, now we, we know you've had some uh, car trouble in the past, but yep. what was your first car and how much did it cost? Um, it was a Peugeot 206. Yeah. 1.9 diesel, Good flat car. diesel, no that. turbo, just a straight diesel. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like an old tractor coming down the road. But I was buzzing, I got me signing on fee from Cass. <laughs> And it cost me 2,500 quid. Brilliant. Insured and say 800, that were my money gone. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but yeah, it, uh, it got me on the road. Brilliant. What's your favourite holiday destination? Where do you like going uh, when the season finishes? Uh, I don't mind Tenerife. Obviously, when we finish playing, there's, there's not many places that are warm. And yeah. you know what I mean? You know, at Tenerife, you've just got guaranteed sun. And there's, uh, there's a few nice spots up there. Costa Decky, I like it up there. Um, what's your go to karaoke song? Kingston Town UB40. Yes. I just I used to sit and listen to my dad sing it in pub. <laughs> and you know, it just plays with you all the time anyway. And then every time now, nah, anywhere, it's karaoke, I'll last I'll go and request it and you'll see my eyes light up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like a baby with candy. I'm like, give me that microphone here and just straight up and straight on it. <laughs> if you could have dinner with three people in the world, dead or alive, who would you pick and why? Um, oh, that's not too sure, really. Uh, I'd like to have a sit down. I'd, well, I went at a, a dinner over a week with Moz. Um, yeah. Some of the stories he were telling. Oh, it was an absolute belter <laughs> that he told. Um, <clears throat> I, can't, I don't think I'll be able to tell it on here. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably my granddad, just to, yeah. obviously, with some of the stuff that's happened now and, yeah. and just have a sit down with him. And um, I, I'd like to see that Donald Trump. Me, he's, yeah. he's a bit of my cup of tea. He just not. He don't care, does yeah. he? Just I'm having this. This is what I'm doing. Are you either with me or without me. So um, he's another. I reckon he's my third. I love him. I love Trump. He's mad, isn't he? I, just, mad. I like him. I like him. I just love how you just boom, put that wall straight down. That's it. <laughs> it's not just your, your your average six foot wall, is it? No, no. It's about a fifty foot wall, and it's not coming in. You know what I mean? It's just it's unheard of, isn't it? Yeah. it just with today's generation now, nah, stuff like that's frowned upon. You just don't care. Great, brilliant, absolutely outstanding, mate. Thank you for coming. Uh, tonight's short notice, but we've got to say before we go, congratulations to Stanley who beat the Milford. Mate, it killed me. They've, it, they've put Milford through to the presentation night, mate. Get that down <coughs> in the last minute with 12 men, I believe. Mate, yeah, 12, 12 men. Game. And Milford, 14 points to five up with 10 minutes to go. And the last play of the game, he scored a try that blew the whistle to win 17 14. <laughs> mate, I just went straight home to bed. It was, just, it, it was the worst, the worst. But fair play, good luck to Ashton and Stanley and all the boys. Also, obviously, big weekend, Toronto, one step closer to Super League, Jones. And it's interesting, yeah. after Robert Elston's comments, will they be allowed into Super League? It's going to be very interesting. Yeah, of course they will. I, I think they will. I think they'll pull out all the stops to get in Super League. Yeah. You've got to do, aren't you? If you're going to play all... You've got to make that much investment around creating 
a club and then not go to Super League if you get promoted or in a position to get promoted, then it's just madness, isn't it? But we'll see, time will tell, mate. Right, that's it for us tonight. Thank you very much to Liam Watson. Watson, can you just please sign the desk? Put him in somewhere. <sighs> Next week on Rugby M, we've got a man that Watson knows very well. The one and only Lee Radford in the studio. So we'll be uh, picking you up on some of those stories. Watson, cheers, buddy, no for coming that. down. Cheers, pal. We'll, we'll see you next week. Good night and God bless. Keep loving Rugby League.